Antarctica. Today we will be uncovering and tackling the mysteries behind Antarctica as well as the sudden fascination that Mr. Obama has with Antarctica as well as some of the operations that have been done within Antarctica and what they're really hiding because there's a huge conspiracy and a cover-up and Antarctica plays a big role in this big conspiracy and in this big deception that is being hidden and covered up from you until today. But what if I told you that Hitler had something to do with Antarctica too? What if I told you that Hitler did not die in 1945? after World War II. What if I told you that Mr. Obama and all the other so-called politicians are so obsessed with Antarctica? What if I told you that they're hiding much more than meets the eye with Antarctica? And what if I told you that Antarctica does not look like the picture that you're seeing right in front of you today? That and more to come as we tackle this and more and the real agenda behind Antarctica and why this is so important. But before we go into the operations that have taken place in and around Antarctica in history, I would like to talk with you about Admiral Richard E. Byrd, who was in fact a known Freemason, and why he's so important to this big equation known as Antarctica. And I'm here at the Knights Templar website that talks about him in detail, and it says, Byrd, who became a Mason at the age of 32, has been called the last explorer, but he was, ne he was really a pioneer in a new breed using airplanes to cover vast areas of the earth which overland expeditions could never hope to reach. The common denominator of his polar expeditions and his career in the United States Navy was aeronautics, which led Admiral Nimitz to say at the end of World War II that if Admiral Byrd had never gone near the Antarctic, he would still be one of the greatest figures in American naval history for his contributions to the Naval Aeronautics Program. And all that he did, he was identified as an officer of the United States Navy. He was indeed a graduate of the United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, but after four years of active service, he was retired for disability sustained in accidents as an undergraduate and during his first tours of active duty. All of his later achievements came as a retired officer assigned to active duty, and each of his promotions to the flag rank of Rear Admiral came through a special act of Congress passed to recognize his achievement. During World War I, Byrd received temporary promotions to the rank of lieutenant commander while on active duty assignments. By 1921, the Navy had returned those in temporary ranks to their permanent ranks, and in the case of a retired officer, a permanent promotion in rank could come only by special act of Congress. So to make the long story short, why is Mr. Byrd so important in this big equation? Because he is the one that led expeditions to Antarctica, and he's even even written about these expeditions in many of his diaries as well. And what you're about to see is that many of the operations that came through in exploring Antarctica, as well as other explorations that have come from Antarctica, was led by this man right here. And this goes over some of his history and what he discovered. But it goes on to say, in 1939, the Third Bird Antarctic Expedition was undertaken under official United States Navy sponsorship with Admiral Byrd as an ex-official member of the board through his appointment as chairman of the United States Antarctic Service. The purpose of this expedition was to map a thousand miles of Antarctic coastline between Marie Bird Land and Alexander Land. Although this was called the Byrd Expedition in the press, Admiral Byrd did not spend the winter in the Antarctic. After taking part in establishing the bases, he returned to the United States. So as you can see, during the time of around World War II, there were a ton of bases that were established in Antarctica by several other countries and we're going to look at more of that when it comes to the Antarctic Treaty System and what all of this is really hiding. So this gives the brief history of uh, Mr. Byrd and his expeditions that he took and we're going to be talking about some of them in detail but it says in 1946 the Navy launched a full-scale Antarctic expedition called Operation High Jump which we will be talking about in a second. With Admiral Byrd as officer in charge but not commander of the 13 ships and 4,000 men. 
Following his return from Antarctica in April 1947, he was received, or relieved, I should say, of active duty. Two years later, he was called back to active duty for Operation High Jump 2, which later was called by, canceled by President and Sir Knight Truman. In 1955, President Eisenhower announced the United States would launch a new Antarctic expedition, and Admiral Byrd was named officer in charge, United States Antarctic Programs, by actual command of the task force for Operation Deep Freeze, and we're going to go over Operation Deep Freeze in just a second, was given to Rear Admiral George J. Dufek, who had been navigator of the USS Bear on the 1939 expedition, and then it talks about his later life as well. And what you're about to see is that some of these operations, there's a lot they're not telling you, and there's a bigger conspiracy that's being hidden, and we're uncovering that conspiracy, and we're tackling just what has been hidden, because the truth is what will make you free. Now that we have some history and background on Mr. Richard E. Byrd, let's talk about Operation High Jump and the UFO connection, as well as some other operations that have been done and conducted by the government, as well as Hitler and what really happened to Hitler after World War II. So here we are, and it says, in 1947, Admiral Richard E. Byrd led 4,000 military troops from the United States Britain and Australia in an invasion of Antarctica called Operation High Jump and at least one follow-up expedition. This is fact, it is undeniable, but the part of the story that is seldom told, at least in official circles, is that Byrd and his forces encountered heavy resistance to their Antarctic venture from flying saucers and had to call off the invasion. Why is this so important? You're about to see how this relates to NASA in just a second. It goes on to say the aspect of the story was pushed forward again a few years ago when a retired real admiral allegedly living in Texas who had been involved in the invasion and said he was shocked when he read material from a documentary entitled Raya from the Sky. He allegedly claimed that he knew that there had been a lot of aircraft and rocket shoot downs but did not realize the situation was as serious as the documentary presented it to be. Operation High Jump was, was basically an invasion of the Antarctic consisted of three naval groups which departed Norfolk, Virginia on the 2nd of December 1946. Now, mind you, this happened around the same time as the Roswell incident, so let's keep that in mind as well. But it goes on to say, they were led by Admiral Richard E. Byrd's command ship, the Icebreaker Northwind, and consisted of the catapult ship Pine Island, the destroyer Brown.